Jay, I'm going to show you how to buy and renovate distressed real estate while lining your pockets. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. I'm your host, James Wise, and folks, this is the show on Holton Wise TV where I work with you guys, mano a mano, you get me, then you get my whole team, and uh, you know, we start things off with some education, teach you about the market, uh, talk to you about what you want to do, and uh, you know, how much money you have, what you could do with that money, things of that nature, then I find you a property, okay? And uh, then my team is actually going to physically be the team that handles the property management, the maintenance, the renovations, if we're doing renovations, the insurance, the title insurance, the whole shebang, right? And today I'm working with my man Jay, okay? Jay is an out-of-state investor, and Jay, you got $50,000 of cash, your own cash, and you also have private money behind you, okay? I'm not sure if it's, uh, you know, like a friend, a coworker, parent, uh, some type of business associate. I'm not sure, but you told me you got 50k of your own cash, and somebody is backing you, which is great, man. And that's 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 the thing you guys got to understand too. Uh, private lenders, okay. There's two kinds of non-traditional lending. There's private lending, and then there's hard money lending. Well, I mean, I guess there's a couple others, just seller financing and stuff like that. But the main two that people talk about is private lenders and hard money lenders. I want you guys to understand something. Hard money lenders are people that are in the business of loaning based upon the asset. They loan to investors like us. We have many hard money lenders available for you guys if you guys need them. Sales at HoltonWise.com. You could reach out to them. Just send us an email, sales at HoltonWise.com, and uh, we'll get you their, their contact info. So you can reach out to them is, is what I meant to say, right? It just kind of Rolls off the tongue so fast. Sometimes I'm thinking it and I don't actually say it. But uh, that's how you can get access to our hard money lenders, right? Uh, but here's the thing. Hard money lenders, they're in the business of lending money, right? That's what they do. There is something also called private lenders, which is what Jay has. That's somebody he knows. That's somebody that's not in the business of loaning money, right? It could be his friend, could be his coworker, could be a business associate. Maybe it's a dude he worked with at a job he had two jobs ago. I don't know. But they're people that are not necessarily in the business of lending money, and you know them through some type of networking or personal relationship, and you convince them to loan you money so you can do your real estate business. You'll see out there that there are lenders advertising themselves as private lenders. That's not a private lender, guys. That's just a hard money lender. That's what a hard money lender is. It's a private lender who's in the business of lending money. So from a pure private lender standpoint, I just wanted to make sure you guys are aware of that because it, it pisses me off. I see it out there. So many folks are like, oh, don't go with the hard money lender. Go with the private lender. And then people are Google, Googling private lenders, and all they're getting is just hard money lenders. I'm not saying hard money lenders are bad. I'm just making sure you guys understand the difference. So what Jay is working with here is a pure private money lender. And what we're going to do is we're going to take your cash, Jay. We're going to take a little bit of this private money lender's cash, and we're going to make you some money. I'm not sure what you're paying them. I didn't account for that uh, in the numbers here. I just went purely based on the deal, based upon a cash basis, because it's a private lender, right? So whatever you're working out with that private lender is specifically going to be between you and them. But this is the type of property that's distressed, and you can make a lot of money, okay? 3551 West 45th, Cleveland 44109. Just hit the market six days ago, listed at 59.9. And I think that is overpriced because this thing is totally beat up, dude. It's, it's beat down. What it is, but here's the cool thing, though. It's beat down, but it's beat down cosmetically, right? It's not beat down... Uh, from things that are going to cost us a lot of money, right? Like what we have is just, you know, a really gross-looking dated kitchen. Like you got this crappy, like parquet-looking bullshit, and like some of the tiles are missing. Like that's not cool. These cabinets, right? 
These cabinets are actually in really good shape. They just look like crap because they got the 1990 handle. Like with a, a fresh coat of paint and some new hardware, those cabinets actually look good, especially with a new countertop in this kitchen, right? So just like little cosmetic stuff, this type of stuff right here, all you got to do is buff these hardwoods. You'll paint all of this one particular color, and then the trim will probably whitewash it to make it look more modern, right? Go with some white. Give this bathroom some love, like, you know, the, the 1992 wood uh, toilet seat ain't going to fly with the baby blue sink, right? That ain't going to fly, right? So we're going to want to renovate that, make that look good. Uh, you know, new vanity up here or new mirror, whatever the heck you want to call it, new vanity down here. Get rid of the baby blue sink. Uh, you know, fix up this room. Looks like there used to be. I'm, I'm, nope, at first I thought that was carpet that got pulled, but that actually is the carpet. So obviously that's going to have to go, you know, paint, paint the walls in this room. Like this room just looks horrible. Uh, but the big ticket items, right, the things that actually cost us a lot of money, this is, looks like a pretty, a fairly new hot water tank. Hot water tanks, they last about 15 years. They cost $1,000 to replace. I'd guess you're in your first five years of that hot water tank. What else do we have? Furnaces. This furnace is probably like 10, 15 years old. They last about 30 years. Doesn't seem like there's going to be any issues with this particular furnace. They cost about three Gs to replace. Updated electrical, right? So the big expensive stuff, okay, the stuff that really matters that stuff is probably in good shape, right? But it's it's a beat up old ugly little house, okay? So what I'd like to see you do is come in cash and I want to try to pick it up at 40, okay? I think the list price that they have it at, this 59, I think this is too much and I don't think people are going to see all the ugliness uh, and then comparable properties in this neighborhood. I don't think they'll pay 59.9. I'd love to see you come in with a clean deal, get it for 40, right? 59.9 is too much. Now, if you could pick it up for 40, all we got to do is cosmetic rentals, right? That's all I'm thinking. So I'm thinking we could put this thing together for about 20k, right? We're going to do the repainting, make the floors all look good, make it all one modern, normal, neutral decor. We'll use the existing cabinets, but we'll just reface them, you know, repaint them, maybe get some new hardware, new countertop, and then new fixtures in the bathroom. But we're only going to need to spend about 20 on this one, right? So we should have this thing totally put together at 60. We do that, we'll get ourselves a Section 8 tenant paying a G. If we get a new tenant in there paying a G on Section 8, I anticipate you spending approximately 451 to operate that property. That includes fixed and variable expenses, brother. That's your taxes, your insurance, and then it's also your water, sewer, and things that we're saving, right? We're saving for things down the road like CapEx, right? You know, the mechanical's in good shape right now, but eventually you're going to have to replace those. So we're saving 600 for that, saving 600 for when our tenants do move out, saving 600 a year for... Uh, the, the repairs and maintenance related to that as well as the non-payment, right? So it's going to average, in my opinion, 6500 or so a year in profit, but that also is in addition to another 1800 that's actually going back to you, but you're saving it for future costs, right? So with the fact that you could buy it at 40 put the 20 into it, you'd be all into this thing at $60,000. My opinion, it'll appraise at 75000 when it's time for that, right? And here's the thing about this neighborhood. This is a, it's a little high risk at the moment, right? It's a, it's a D-class neighborhood, what I would consider, like high, low, high, low, low, C, high, D, I guess is, you know, if I'm splitting hairs here, right? But I think it's the best neighborhood to target in Cleveland. Number one, when you got a small budget like this, that's great. Number two, uh, it's near a place called Metro Health. Uh, Cleveland's big, big, big healthcare hub, okay? They're investing a billion dollars into that neighborhood. When you invest a billion dollars into a low-income neighborhood, what do you think is going to happen, right? Things are going to get better. That's a lot of freaking money. In addition, it's not just in their business. They're also committed to investing in low-income housing, things of that nature surrounding their hospital, right? Plus, it's directly north of really nice neighborhoods that went through appreciation and gentrification. Ohio City, Tremont, Gordon Square, Edgewater, right? Go ahead and Google those neighborhoods. When you hear about the resurgence of Cleveland, those are the neighborhoods people are talking about. So I, I see this neighborhood going on the upswing, right? And that's why when I say we put a tenant in there, I say we do a Section 8 tenant, right? Because right now, 
you could be dealing with some some risky type tenants. So to make sure our numbers remain as consistent as humanly possible, we want to alleviate the risks of non-payment and people losing their jobs and, and just fucking up our house, right? We want to re reduce those risks as much as we can and get ourselves a tenant that's got their rent guaranteed by Uncle Sam, dude. We got to play the game the right way, right? So with all that said... All in for 60. If we get it to appraise at 75, which I don't see uh, us having any issues, they would loan you back 56250 of your original 60, meaning you'd only have 4750 into the deal, which would put this investment at a 75% return on your money, right? Of course, that doesn't count whatever you're paying your private money guy uh, for the use of his 10K. But like I said, you could target distressed real estate and make a bunch of money, and this is exactly how you would do that. My team, if you're interested in this deal, let me know. We'll write the offer to that seller. We'll negotiate. We'll set it up to where you get a third-party home inspector in there. And after the inspection, we could possibly come back to them, right? Like, I know the, the cosmetic condition of the house. I know the condition of the hot water tank, the electrical, the furnace. What I didn't tell you about is the roof. I haven't been given any information about the roof. doesn't appear the seller knows what's going on with their roof. That's what our home inspector is for. If it turns out, that we need a new roof that's going to be like probably a $5,000 roof. Now, does the deal still make sense if you have to spend an additional $5,000? Yeah, dude. You might not make a 75% return on your money, but you could do the numbers. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be a lot, number one. Number two, I could take that new information back to the seller, and I could try to beat them up a little bit and get that price worked down even more, right? These are the types of things we could do for you. And then, of course, after it closes, my guys will go in there, We'll handle this rental for you. We'll put in those tenants. We'll run you through the Section 8 stuff. We will do everything on your behalf. And then, you know, we'll move you on to the next one and the next one and the next one because that's the name of the game. And we got to stack deals like this on top of each other. This one deal makes a lot of money for what it is, but it's not going to make you a millionaire. So we need to do this deal and then the next and the next and the next and the next, which is why you bought, uh, I believe you bought the 10-pack from me, the 10-pack of property analysis, which is smart because... Number one, we need to stack deals on top of each other. Number two, not every deal goes through. I want to see you pick it up at 40, but this particular seller right now is trying to get 59. I think we'll be able to negotiate them down because I don't think they're going to get this price, but I can't guarantee you this seller is totally rational and is willing to take 40, right? If you wanted to pay 59, I'm sure they would take it, but I can't guarantee that, right? So that's why you buy the multi multi-packs with these analysis videos because not every seller is going to be reasonable and if you pay 59 you're overpaying and it's not a good deal so i wouldn't want to see you that do that right so if that was the situation i'd want to just move on to the next deal and then lastly why it's smart to buy the multi-packs is i discount them right the the more you get uh the cheaper the price is because we want to work with you guys uh in the long term and we also know that this business takes a lot of time you got to look at a lot of properties you got to put in a lot of offers got to do a lot of due diligence right you don't get to decide to be a real estate investor on monday and then on wednesday you got a 50 unit portfolio it's not how it works it's taken me over 10 years uh to build my personal portfolio and i'm still cooking every day right so that's what i got for you brother let me know what you want to do Everybody else, click the show notes below if you want to work with my team, or you could just shoot us an email, sales at holdenlice.com. Give us your phone number. We'll call you. We'll talk to you about our products and services, answer any questions you may have. New viewers, if you just Googled, I don't know, whatever the fuck you're Googling to get to my show, right? Like how to make money in real estate, how to buy cheap real estate. I don't know what you guys are Googling. But if you're Googling that stuff, you don't want to work with anybody. You just want to learn. Do yourself a solid and smash. That subscribe button because Holton Wise TV is real estate investing made easy. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.